So here it is on March 21st, and we're looking outside to see what the bees are going after. These are quaking aspen. They still haven't popped yet. The flowers aren't blossoming, so that's not the source. Honeybees are all over this silver maple tree. I had to slow the sequence down so you could see the pollinators working. But when you walk past this tree, you could just hear it humming. These are some of the earliest sources of nectar and pollen. Here in the northeastern United States, 1,300 feet above sea level, agricultural zone four. So there they are. But something much more interesting than this is what I'm going to share with you today. But I thought we'd start off, what do we get from silver maple? We get the pollen, of course, that they need for the bee bread to feed the brood so they can start building up. They also get a really good nectar load. Now I have a lot of different silver maples on my property, but uh, only a few are in this blossom state right now. So there's much more yet to come, much more to bloom. So this is just getting started. And this tree right here is about 35 feet tall. And this honeybee, I hope, is from my own apiary. Now the tell was really when we could walk around on this nice warm day, it's about 65 degrees, listen to the bees in the tree. It's just humming with them. It almost sounded like a swarm. And that's what got my attention, so I thought let's look into other areas and see what's going on. Here we are in the wetlands, skunk cabbage, and there's a honeybee going right in or coming out of one of these little skunk cabbage beginnings. This is a warm-blooded plant. That's right, it can actually melt its way through snow. And inside the little cavity there that houses the pollen that this honeybee worker is packing under her hind legs, it generates heat. So it's much warmer than even the outside air. Now the good thing is I decided one of my goals this year was to get video of the bees actually getting pollen from the skunk cabbage. Do you think they get nectar out of there? Nah, it's just pollen. But that's enough because that's what we need to kick it off. And remember, we also have the silver maple trees to help kick that off. And here she goes back in. Now, last year I walked all over the wetlands and tried to find the bees getting in and out of the skunk cabbage. I would just see one zip away in the distance. And what I found out this year was if I walk in from downwind and wherever I could smell the skunk cabbage the strongest, I figured, you know, the honeybees are going to follow that scent. So I actually went to the patches of skunk cabbage that smelled the strongest. And here we go. Here's another worker bee. And this is, of course, slowed way down because the action when these bees fly in and out of the skunk cabbage is actually pretty fast. So it took me a lot of time to sit down and wait for some of these bees to come out. Here's one right here and there's the pollen. So when you see the pollen on your landing boards, a lot of people say, well, what's that light yellow pollen? What's the source of it? Well, for me right now, two predominant sources. The silver maple trees which are among the earliest to provide pollen and nectar. And of course now the skunk cabbage. So the willow trees have not blossomed yet. They're going to be a great pollen resource later. And this honeybee actually came right back to the same plant later. And there she is. They actually tend to spend a long time inside. I sat for as long as five or six minutes looking at the same skunk cabbage plant, waiting for the worker bee to come out of it. 
So they do have the advantage while they're in there, even though it's shaded and dark. And the pollen looks kind of like a little yellow ping pong ball, kind of a small one. And uh, the bees fly really fast in and out of there. That's real time. That's real time there. But the bees get warmed up once they're inside, then they zip back and tell the other bees through the waggle dance where these things are located. And they get to that little area and then they start to smell the skunk cabbage and then they home in on the smell. So thank goodness the wind was down so I could get these shots. Earlier it was a little breezy there when I was trying to film the ones in the maple trees. That one didn't seem to have much pollen on its leg. So there was a correlation too. Uh, the workers that spent the longest amount of time inside the skunk cabbage came out with the most pollen on their legs. So a lot of people want to know, should we continue to feed? Should we put sugar syrup on our hives? Should we put pollen patties in there? Well, in my opinion, once the environment wakes up like this, once those telltale maple trees, silver maples, remember, once they start to provide nectar, uh, it's like a cascade. Other environmental resources will also kick in one after another. And we'll end up with the fruiting trees, like the cherries, the apple trees, and things like that. Dandelion will come in, then clover. So we're actually well in now. And unless you have a really weak colony that needs your help, or you've done a split, or you've collected a swarm, or something like that, once the environment provides, I don't see any reason to really put pollen patties in your hive, or sugar syrup. A strong colony will have foragers out. Look at all the pollen on this worker's legs. Now this took me a lot of time to get. I was really excited to get this sequence because I like it when the worker bee lingers a little bit and hovers around because what do you think she's doing? She's also registering the location of this plant and she will come back later or other foragers from the same colony We'll come back to this location to get more pollen. Remember, there's no nectar coming from a skunk cabbage. So the pollen's critical for the brood production. Here's another one fully loaded. And look at the shape of the plant, of course, the skunk cabbage. Why would it be called a cabbage? Because later, when it matures, the leaves are huge. A little bigger than a basketball. So this entire area in here will be wall-to-wall -wall skunk cabbage leaves. But this is the time of year when they're really providing for our pollinators. And I haven't seen other pollinators going in and out. In fact, just the honeybees so far. And as I mentioned before, this plant will actually melt its way through the snow and ice. So if we still had snow cover here in March, this plant would still grow on its own. It generates its own heat, which is just amazing to me. And this one scraped off one of her pollen balls there and dropped it right back in the plant. So you might think, well, would she come back later? and scoop that little ball of pollen right back onto her hind leg? No, nah, they don't. It's funny. Once they drop it, that's it. They'll go to the plant and they'll collect a new batch of pollen. So here again, a last look on our way out of the silver maple. These are just blossoming now. The nectar is strong from here as well as pollen, so this is a fantastic kickoff plant. So if you're planting something, you have a small area, a small yard, trees will provide much more than just a grass area on your lawn. So do both. Plant clover, things like that. Dandelions are okay. Clover provides throughout the year. I hope you enjoy this little glimpse of what's going on in my neck of the woods on this March 21st day. So pollen and nectar coming in. Things are looking good. Thanks for watching.